Read this, sports fans. There's a whole area of climate so-called science that is really more like a cult. It's like Hare Krishna or something like that. They're glassy-eyed and they chant. It will potentially harm the image of all science. Wait for it. That is from Princeton. Emeritus physics professor and former director of the Office of Science at the Department of Energy, William Happer, who joins us now. Professor, that's about as strongly worded statement as I've ever heard. Are you anti the climate science people? Well, yes, but let me take this opportunity to apologize to the Hare Krishna people <laughs> who uh, have noble goals. And, uh, I really am sorry I used that simile. Uh, so, uh, well, what exactly are you saying? Are you saying that climate scientists walk in lockstep and they're not allowed to break out of that? Is that it? No, there are many very good climate scientists. I especially admire climate scientists who do measurements, you know, of... Uh, Temperatures from satellites, uh, properties of the ocean from buoys, you know, concentrations of CO2. These are good scientists and uh, we should support them. I'm all for them. But there's a, a cult that's built up around them, you know, and uh, any time you confront them, uh, instead of talking about the science, uh, they talk about 97% agree with us, you know, we have to be right, you know, mm -hmm. so that's what I meant by a cult. Um, it, could, could, I, could anyone get a job in the climate science department of a major university if they're not gung-ho global warmers? I don't think so, uh, certainly not for the last few years, but I hope that will change because there's a lot of important climate science that ought to be done and I, I hope it will be done. You're not a skeptic, are you? you? You do believe that the climate is changing and it's human beings who are at least partly responsible. That, I think, is your position. Yes, I, I think the human contribution, however, is very, very small. You know, I think most of the climate change we're seeing is natural. You know, climate has always changed. Who denies that climate changes? You know, you have to be completely blind to deny that. Mm. Uh, is the planet, uh, can, can the planet be saved? Are we doomed? Because that's what we constantly hear. We've only got a few years left. Well, uh, no, that, I mean, uh, of course not. It, it's, uh, it's a problem with science illiteracy. You know, most people don't realize that the normal CO2 levels have typically been measured in thousands of parts per million, not the puny 400 or so we have today. And the Earth thrives, so the, the idea that the Earth has never had high CO2 levels, it's completely false. Most of the time, it's never had such low levels as we have now. <laughs> see, so see, so why don't you this. learn some facts out there? We never hear this. We just never, ever hear this. Please tell us a little bit about anthropogenic climate change. Uh, should we be really concerned about CO2? And what do you think? Well, uh, no. Actually, CO2 will be good for the Earth. If you look at geological history, CO2 levels are unusually low now. It's very seldom that they've been this low uh, for the last 600 million years or so. And so many plants are not growing as well as they could if they had more CO2. So CO2 by itself will be very good for the Earth. More will be a good thing. And uh, we hear a lot about CO2 being a pollution that's going to drive a catastrophic global warming. And um, we're all doomed if we don't regulate and tax and eventually phase it out. Uh, what do you think? Are we going to see dangerous climate change because of this? No, it's pretty clear that we're not going to see dangerous climate change. If nothing else, the Earth has already done this experiment many times, you know, because in the past, in the geological past, CO2 levels have been four times, five times, even higher than today, and their life flourished all over the Earth and in the oceans too. So it's nonsense. Uh, it's not a pollutant. Now, there are real pollutants that we ought to be concerned about, and in this frenzy over CO2, we're neglecting many of them. And nobody wants to live in a polluted world. If you go to Shanghai or Beijing or Delhi, you know, the air, you can cut it with a knife some days. That's not CO2 at all. That's fly ash, you know, it's sulfur oxide. So there are obvious things that can be controlled and should be controlled, but not CO2.